Hey, what's going on everybody? Future Glenn here. I just wanted to stop by and let you guys know that uh, this episode of Versus had a slight hiccup uh, about halfway through, give or take, the video cuts because the video was recording and then I guess my drive was too full so it just stopped recording. Um, so I do apologize for the tiny little cut that happens. Hopefully it's not that big of a deal. Uh, and then also when the video was first going, for some reason Jason's camera was massive and you had me just barely super small in the right hand corner uh, I do fix that about eight minutes through so uh, apologies for that as well uh, and the last thing that I will apologize for before you guys get to see this video is for some reason my camera was black and white I have no idea why or, or what happened obviously you can see there is color everything's okay but for some reason in the video it is black and white so uh, apologies for all of that, but I do hope you guys enjoy this first ever versus video. This is something that I've been super proud of and excited that I finally got to do it. Big, big thank you to Jason for coming on to be the first guest of this. And I hope you guys are having a great day and remember be better, be kind, and I will see you guys on the next final boss video. Take care. Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Versus. Well, actually, this is the first ever Versus, my bad. Uh, today is a very exciting day. I get to finally show off the new show that I've been working on for the past couple of months. Uh, and today's guest is a very awesome creator. His name is Jason Finelli. You might know him on his podcast, Cheese Steaks and Controllers, and he does amazing work over there. He is also a freelance writer and does some really good work on his articles. Jason, how you doing, man? I'm great. I'm finally coming down from that E3 high. It was a crazy, crazy couple of days with some very, very good news and uh, excited to dive into this and talk about something um, that I've never really explored before, like in an article or in a, in a, in a setting like this. I was, it was cool to go back at, through my mind at all the different games that I've played to pick this list. Um, uh, I'm very excited. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very excited to hear uh, what your favorite boss fights are. And of course, if anyone doesn't know what this show is, it is going to be me. Unfortunately, you got to deal with me for more shows on the channel, uh, talking to some awesome content creators about what their favorite boss fights are in video games. I figured it'd be a cool, unique way to kind of get to know a content creator and talk about something a little bit different. So very excited to see what today is going to bring us. So... Uh, and then yeah. I, uh, I did talk to Jason uh, briefly about what we should do before jumping straight into the boss fights. Uh, E3 was just last week or two weeks ago, and I figured that we would kind of talk about E3, what maybe what our favorite games that we got to see uh, during that little fun week that we had. So uh, any, any takeaways from E3 that you have? Uh, I feel like this next 18 months or so of games is going to just be an absolute onslaught of good game after good game after good game it may not seem that way because some of the e3 conferences were considered lackluster or the entire format was a little bit weird right. but when you really dig into like xbox's uh, conference ubisoft's conference nintendo's conference there was a ton of meat on that bone oh yeah uh you just you just have to really like if you if you look at it on a calendar like if you plan it out throughout the next like year or so obviously some games we don't know exact dates of but still just an amazing assortment of games coming our way yes yeah that is uh, very true uh, e3 was obviously a little bit different this year but overall we got some very exciting announcements uh, my favorite of the C uh, of e3 would probably be replaced that was shown at uh, the xbox ah, yes. showcase that game looks like a ton of fun um Obviously, I, I do like some FromSoft games, so Elden Ring finally getting a, that release date at Summer's Game Fest was very huge. And big, uh, big time. Uh, Death Stranding Director's Cut really didn't think that was ever going to happen, and I, I freaked out big time for that. So, I actually have not played uh, Death Stranding yet, oh, so okay. the fact that I'll be able to play it on PS5 in this Director's Cut is cool. I own it, right. so you would think, <laughs> but it's one of those games where you pick up cheap in a sale, and then all it does is decorate your shelf. Um, as you said. <laughs> although the, my games are on my shelf right now, so <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I do want to play it cause I love Kojima. I'm a big Metal Gear fan. Always have been. Um, I do kind of go back and police notes a little bit and zone of the enders. I'm sort of, uh, sort of, I, I like the uh, PS3 remakes or remasters that they did. Right. Uh, but Metal Gear, Metal Gear is a formative series in my life. In fact, I think we're going to talk about it in a little while. Sweet. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Definitely, definitely excited to play some Death Stranding. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Best, 
But as for my favorite E3 uh, announcements, uh, Metroid Dread absolutely comes to mind. That, yes. to, to not only acknowledge that Prime 4 is still in development, which is something that we have wanted since it was first announced at E3 18, yep. three years ago, and then say, yeah, but here's this other thing, and then you give us something that's been rumored for even longer, <laughs> Metroid Dread, referenced in Metroid Prime 3, I believe it was, something maybe like even that. earlier than that. Um Awesome. Just a really, really cool surprise. Along with like Advance Wars 1 and 2 coming back. I never thought we'd see Advance Wars again, probably because the Game Boy Advance no longer exists and Days of Ruin on the DS we don't talk about. <laughs> but uh, to see 1 and 2 make a return in that awesome style, very, very cool. Uh, and then over on Xbox side, I'm with you on Replaced. I'm with. Uh, I also liked Somerville. Yes, uh, Somerville that, was great. That, that, that which looked like basically a quiet place, the game, and you don't have to be quiet. <laughs> yep. Um, that sort of thing. That was really really cool. Uh, Starfield. I, I'm, a, I'm not a huge Bethesda Game Studios guy. I like their games, but they're the kind of games that I don't really finish. Like it never hooks me to the very end. Those games like Elder Scrolls and Fallout. Right. But I'm a big space guy. Oh, like Mass Effect is up there oh, yeah. in one of my top series of all time, too. So I think Starfield may be able to get me over that hump. Like, I loved Outer Worlds. Yeah, Outer Worlds Lo was great. Big fan of Outer Worlds. So if, if Starfield can give me that sort of experience, um, it'll be less humor, I'm assuming, because that's just how Bethesda makes their games. Right. Uh, but um, I dig that very much as well. Yeah, actually, I played through Mass Effect for the first time with the uh, Legendary Edition coming Welcome out. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome to all three of them. Uh, yeah, I so I finished one within like eight hours. I kind of rushed through that because I was told it's sure. you know it's not the best, but it's still worth playing. Uh, two took my time with. I think I did almost everything I could in that game, uh, cool. and then three I'm about halfway through that now. So I'm making my way through that one at the moment. But oh, that's cool. So you're not you're not uh, finished three yet. Uh, yet. You're gonna you're prob you've probably heard a lot <laughs> of um, teeth gnashing oh, about yeah. the. Uh, finale of Mass Effect 3, just go into it with an open mind and, you know, without a torch lit next to you. Right. Uh, and I think <laughs> I, if you if you let it happen, especially now that the extended cut, when it first came out, a lot of people, it was a little too avant-garde, a little too not obvious what they were trying to do. With the extended cut, and they added more information based on the ending that you gave yourself, um... I feel like it's a little more fleshed out, a little more easy to understand, and a little more appreciated uh, with that extra information. Right. Yeah, that's what I was told by one of my friends because we were talking about Mass Effect 3, and he was like, hey, man, like I know you've heard over the years that 3's ending isn't the best, but don't don't pay attention to other people's ending. Just get your ending, and, and that is that is your story. So I'm looking forward to agree. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. And then I, I didn't expect uh, Outer Worlds 2 to be announced. Uh, I heard kind Love of that trailer about it, but I didn't think it happened. <laughs> Love that trailer. My favorite trailer of the weekend. Um, just the, the <laughs> completely sarcastic tone. Where they, <laughs> yeah. they have to sweep over the, the, the epic shot of the world. And, <laughs> and all we have is a logo. Oh, man, I was dying. That was good. <laughs> yeah, that was no, that stuff. was a great time. I'm glad that they uh, they threw that in, knowing that they are a <laughs> video game. So that, that part was really yeah. cool. <laughs> Yes, that's it. We're a video game. That's all we know. Right. Uh, and then, yeah, so, Starfield. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm surprised that it's November of next year. That was definitely uh, a big shock to me. I thought maybe this year, but maybe early next year. Um, and I, I'm the same way. I'm not super big on Bethesda games. My biggest issue with their games were their engine. But, I mean, $7.5 billion. I, I hope Xbox has a plan to, to help yeah. them with that new engine. So Yeah, yeah, that, that's a nice influx of cash to get that engine going. So, right. um, I, yeah, I if, if the trailer that they showed is actually alpha in engine footage and we start to see gameplay that looks like that, I'll, I will be confident. Right, but I, we won't see that until this time next year, if not earlier. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on that anytime soon. Also, Xbox, if you really think about the position that they're in now, from the from last year's showcase and this year's E3, they have so many first party games now. Granted, they bought a lot of the studios, so they their right. first their first party by proxy, but. Um, the idea that Xbox doesn't have first-party games anymore is dead. 
Oh, yeah. It's dead. <laughs> there is no denying that that line of thinking needs to go by the wayside. It's time to adopt a new line of thinking, and that is Xbox is going to come out with a first-party game every month, yep. and uh, it'll be free on Game Pass. Day one Game Pass. You didn't play... You're 22, so you're, you're, you're old enough. <laughs> you didn't play the um, day one Xbox Game Pass drinking game, did you? No. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Because if you did, you'd be dead. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I actually I thought about that. I went on Twitter after their show, and everyone was like, "Man, we should have done day one Game Pass." I was like, "Man, that's a no, good idea." God. Oh, <laughs> it would have been oh, brutal man. though. <laughs> You'd still have a hangover. Twenty seven, right. <laughs> twenty seven of the thirty games day one Game Pass. That's that's, that's insane. Amazing. Yeah, and, and I mean Game Pass that, is the best right now. <laughs> that's what puts Xbox over Nintendo as my favorite conference of E three. Gotcha. The, they, they both had stellar games. They both had great lineups. I'm a huge Smash Brothers fan, and I'm a longtime Tekken fan. Oh, so, so those you're two, happy. <laughs> those two coming together are amazing. Right. But what bumps Xbox over Nintendo for me is they showed 30 games, and 27 of them are day one on a subscription that most people already have. Right. Th- Nintendo can't offer that. Nintendo is sixty dollar entry fees to buy their games, which is fine. I mean, that at $60 has been the standard price forever. Now, some are creeping up to 70, which I'm okay with also, but uh, that's a whole other topic for another day. Right. <laughs> um, Microsoft has the ability to say, yeah, these games are coming out, but also if you are already subscribed to us, you don't have to pay anything else. It's yours. Right. Buy it if you want to, but you don't have to. That is hard to ignore. You know what oh, I mean? It's for hard. Sure. That, that, that value, that, that, uh, Ability to offer those things in a unique offering that Sony and Nintendo cannot match. And don't give me that PlayStation Now nonsense. <laughs> um, it's hard to beat. It's really hard to uh, to top. And that's what puts Xbox slightly over Nintendo for me as the best show of E3 2021. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, G- Game Pass has definitely shown us that it's it's here and it's here to stay. And that it I is the, the best service in gaming at the moment. I mean... You know, PlayStation has their PS now, but it's not nearly as good as what Xbox Game Pass is. I mean, it's just it's just not. And uh, I hope for the future that maybe Sony has something that they're working on, but I just I don't know if they do. I, I feel like they're kind of like Nintendo, where they they take pride in their exclusives and that they don't want to have a Game Pass, which is unfortunate. But I get it; it's a business, and that's that's how it works. So, but yeah, their 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 exclusives are great. Oh yeah, they are. There are top tier games, but but what PlayStation fails to realize is they could beat Xbox Game Pass the first day they announce a similar subscription service, and all they have to say is PlayStation One through PlayStation Five. Oh yeah, yeah, that that's be it. Huge. All that legacy. Yep. In one drop, they, they <laughs> people <laughs> Game Pass would be scrambling to do something, and they, they 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 just don't see it. They don't see the. The merit in it. I think subscription-based services like that are a very Western train of thought. For like sure. your Netflixes, your Disney Pluses, your Xbox Game Passes. Sony sees subscriptions for online, PlayStation Plus, and they see a separate streaming service in PlayStation Now, but they're not the same right. as Game Pass. Even if they bundle them together, they're not the same as Game Pass. <laughs> yeah, no, not, absolutely just, not. That is, the, the, the until Sony... And I, I stress Sony because I don't think Nintendo would ever do this. Oh, I don't think um, so either. Even less so than Sony. Uh, but but if they were to adopt this sort of service and cultivate it into something that's their own and using their back library as a as a cornerstone, I feel like it could be a huge competitor very quickly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially with that PS one through five. I mean, that would be that'd be huge for play, or for huge. PlayStation users. Like people have been huge. wanting backwards compatibility forever now, and if they were able to access it through like fifteen bucks a month, they would jump on it immediately. Yeah, and if you if you think third parties wouldn't jump on on that too, like they've jumped in on Xbox Game Pass, you're 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 fooling yourself. Yep. <laughs> Square would put every Final Fantasy on that service day one. Oh, absolutely. Yes, day they would. <laughs> one. And they're remastered their original states. They'd have Bandai Namco would bring in all the Tekken games. You have all the first-party PlayStation games. Crash Bandicoot from Activision would be on there. Um, even your weird, obscure PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 games that nobody hears of anymore, like Croc, Legend of the Gobos, and weird nonsense <laughs> like that. You could do anything you wanted. They just won't do it. 
Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. I, I'm hopeful that maybe someday PlayStation will will finally figure that out, just like Xbox yeah. finally figured out. Hey, people want this. I mean, I mean, now look at it. I mean, it's everyone is talking about Game Pass in in the gaming space. Like every single t- tweet I see nowadays about Xbox is about Game Pass, and that's huge for them. That's true. That's true. And that brief sound you heard, audience, um, when I mentioned PlayStation One just now, was his gears turning. When I said Croc, Legend of the Gabos, like, what is that? He's thinking to himself. Oh, yeah. No so, idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> That's a, it's a bargain bin 3D platformer from the PS1 days that um, I, for whatever reason, holds hold dear in my heart. I don't know why. It, it frankly doesn't deserve it, but I love that stupid game. Interesting. Uh, okay. It's one of those guilty pleasures, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, that would be an interesting list for a future video, by the way. Not necessarily with me, but like you were guilt like games people wouldn't expect you to think of so highly that then you do like that croc is an example for me and another one is you know the board game clue oh yeah who doesn't know clue <laughs> well super, super nintendo and sega genesis back in the day they had a, a version of clue where you played the board game but also the ai acted like as a sort of dungeon master oh wow so like when you when you went into a room and you guessed like carl mustard with the rope in the room that you're in it played a scene that was based on the uh, guess you just made. So if you guess Colonel Mustard, but the DM decided that Colonel Mustard was in the lounge and you're in the conservatory, they'll show him in the lounge. If you oh, wow, guess okay. the rope and the rope was in the ballroom, it'll show the rope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it, it was a very interesting take on Clue that completely ruined the board game for me because it's a better <laughs> way to play Clue. Um, so, yes, now that we've gone completely off the rails, E3 was great. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I I was pretty happy with it. Uh, I mean, all that's left of the three for me is where where's PlayStation at? Where's that last state of play? I mean, is it? I know the rumor at the moment is end of the month, but obviously PlayStation hasn't said a damn thing, so I'm not not no, too sure they're gonna, what they're playing. <laughs> I think they're going to distance themselves. Uh, they're basically going to flip. So last year, uh, PlayStation took June and Xbox took July. I would not be surprised if those two. Uh, companies flip. You had Xbox as right. part of E3. Sony gives it about a month to distance themselves from E3, and then they have their own thing um, early to mid July, somewhere in the like 12th, 13th range. Yeah, for at the sure. latest. Um, if, they yeah, they, if, they if they do anything, yeah, if they could say <laughs> no, yeah, they're yeah, gonna be like, we'll yeah, say. PlayStation Experience coming back in December. That's when we'll talk about our games. That would be cool. <laughs> I mean, I would be, I would cool. be I absolutely down for PlayStation Experience to come back. <laughs> Especially because I wanted to go to the last one, and then it didn't happen. And then, obviously, last year with all the events, of course, it wasn't happening. So, no. If they bring it back, hopefully, uh, hopefully, it'll come back stronger than ever this year. It's been like a three-year hiatus, I think. Twenty eighteen yeah. was the last one. Yeah, it's been they a didn't while. Do it Twenty nineteen, and then now here we are. So, yep. We'll see. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Awesome. We well, will see. Moving on from E3, although E3 is fun to talk about, uh, sure we're going to jump right into the the topic of the show. Obviously, talking about your boss fights. Uh, apologies in advance if I do have to open up Google to figure out, you know, if I don't know a certain boss fight you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sure you it's probably going to happen. So, <laughs> young and young kids. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, so we're just going to start off right off uh, top five. We'll start from five to one, obviously. Uh, what do you think you want to put as your number five? Number five, I am going to take you back to the year 1998, 1999, I think it's somewhere in there. And that's the original Metal Gear Solid. Now, people, Sweet. if they're ranking Metal Gear Solid boss fights, they're going to give you the end for Metal Gear Solid 3, the sniper fight, of which course. I agree with. They're going to give you things like the Metal Gear Rex versus Ray and MGS4, which I also think is pretty cool, and even Psycho Mantis from the first Metal Gear game, which was a transcendent boss fight. But for me, for this discussion, I'm going to choose Vulcan Raven. Vulcan Raven. And I like I like Vulcan Raven, A, because it's 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 in this big frozen uh facility with all these boxes, and it's basically like checking lanes. So if he's if you're in the same lane he's in, he will fire at you. So there's a tension there where you're you're trying to be sneaky, but at the same time you have to be sneaky in a certain way so that you're not directly in front of him, and you can sneak up on him and get a couple shots in or take a couple punches if you're going for the uh, no kill route. I just find it to be a more interesting, more tense, more um, 
more of a boss fight of what Metal Gear Solid is good at. It's not to say that, that Psycho Manus' fight isn't cool, right. but I think there's more supernatural in that as opposed to Volk and Raven's fight where you're, you know, leaning up against the wall and trying and making sure he's not there and you're you're doing the 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 stealth sneaking aspects just as much as you're doing the combat part, you're not just dodging floating objects <laughs> right. like you did this like a man's fight and plugging your controller in for player one to player two. <laughs> Those things were cool, uh, but for me, Vulcan Raven edges just a little bit over uh, Psycho Manus for that reason. And also because um, I'm kind of lumping in the tank fight. Fighting a tank is just cool. Oh, for sure. You know I mean? yeah. And, and, and throw, throwing their grenades into the top bay and having the thing blow up, that's really, really awesome. Uh, but no, that Vulcan Raven fight for me is uh, is super cool. That's number five, easy. Sweet, yeah. I mean, especially I mean back then, like you know, tank fights weren't. Uh, I feel like weren't quite the move back then, and to have yeah. that kind of strategy to hide behind things and to toss those nades were definitely uh, a lot of fun, especially for Metal Gear, since that was you know that that's our stealth genre. You know, that was what what happened with those games. So, yeah, I, I like that boss fight a lot. Uh, it's, it's up there for me as well, I think. I don't know if it's in my top five, but it is It is a good boss fight for sure. And I do agree yeah. with uh, with putting that up there. So that that is definitely a good one. So it's definitely the combat for you that you like that boss fight. Yeah, yeah. I think when, when you think of Metal Gear Solid, you think of espionage, you think of stealth, you think of tactics. You don't necessarily think of just like, you know, dodging supernatural beings. So yeah. Vulcan Raven is a more pure... Metal Gear boss fight. That's not to say that Psycho Manus isn't awesome. It is. Right. It's just uh, uh, Vulcan Raven is is the one for me. Awesome. Sweet. All right. Jumping into number four for you. Ooh, number four. Now I have to organize these in my head. I I, <laughs> I did say that I forgot to write these down, but I do remember them. They're all in here. <laughs> uh, I just need to figure out. I didn't rank them. Was the problem? Gotcha. I, okay. I, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to quickly rank them in my head right now, and I think I have it. I think I have it now. Yeah. So number four. I'm taking you back even earlier to the Super Nintendo days. Oh, here we um, go. I am a, I am a huge, huge fan. One of my top games of all time, if we did that list, of Super Mario RPG, Legend oh, of the okay. Seven Stars. Huge fan of that game. And there are a ton of good boss fights that I could pick here. I could pick Be Bellom, the big dog monster thing with the long tail. I could pick Booster in his tower, although there's a way to avoid that boss fight, so some people <laughs> might have never even fought it. Um, Croco in the very beginning is cool, but for me, it's actually the hidden boss fight in Ooh. Super Mario RPG, Culex in Monstro Town, where if you get a certain key and you open a certain door, you can fight an actual boss from Final Fantasy in a cool Square Nintendo crossover. Wow, it plays okay. the it plays the Final Fantasy boss fight music. It plays the Final Fantasy victory theme. If you win, you get a special item. If you if you win, there's a cutscene. Uh, that where it's with some dialogue where it's 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 quick. It's really it's really anticlimactic, but you know he talks to you, you fight him, he talks to you again, he goes away. But it served for me, and the reason it holds such a special place for me is because it served as the link to Final Fantasy for me. Growing up, I was very platform and fighting game heavy. So your standard Mario games, your Sonic the Hedgehogs, your Street Fighters, right. your not 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 Mortal Kombat's. I lived in a house where bloody video games were not allowed. <laughs> Um, so I, Mortal Kombat came later, right. but I didn't really have that RPG experience because, you know, I was, I was a dumb, stupid kid my, with an attention span of a wet noodle and yep. those kind of games just weren't for me yet. <laughs> Mario RPG changed me on the format by bringing Super Mario into that JRPG turn-based structure. And then Culex brought me into Final Fantasy. Like, oh, wow. what is this guy? Why does he look like this? <laughs> why is his music what is so happening? Good? <laughs> why, is this, yeah, why is his music so great? And then I still hadn't, I, I would play it at another friend's house, but I didn't own a Final Fantasy until you'll have to wait until later in the list. Sweet. I fig I figure there's going to be a Final Fantasy up there for sure. <laughs> there sure is. Uh, it's there actually sure funny. I, I, I'm a big Mario fan, and the one Mario game I haven't played is RPG. Uh, oh, I, man. I don't know it. why. <laughs> Because yeah, it's different. Like you, when you think Super Mario, you don't think turn-based JRPG, right? Unless you're thinking Paper Mario. Super Mario is Odyssey, is sixty-four, is you know all three, all the games in the three D All Stars, or the nineteen eighty-five originals. It's not right. a, a, a weird turn-based RPG where you fight with Bowser and Toadstool <laughs> uses a frying pan. It's right. just that's not what you think of. 
So I understand that. Um, if you like JRPGs, then I suggest that heavily. I can't suggest it enough. Right. Um, ex- <laughs> excellent soundtrack, great story. Interesting way to expand the Mario universe into, you know, all the different original towns and, and people and, and things that they introduced. They didn't follow up on any of them, but of uh, it was, a, it's a, it's a, yeah, right. It's a really, really cool uh, experience that I, it's a good relic of history um, that I suggest that you take a look at if you're into those kind of games for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I uh, I actually also just learned from my good friend AJ. He loves that game, and I actually didn't know that Square had helped with that game. And that's uh, yes. that was something brand new to me during Nintendo's E3 conference. Actually, is when I learned about that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, they uh, they co-developed um, the game, and to, in fact, I believe they own all of the non Mario things that were added. They that's they crazy. they. They created Gino. They created Mallow. They created Jonathan Jones, the shark guy. They created that whole world, so they own all the rights to it, despite it being a Mario game. And it's a weird, weird little thing uh, that I don't think will ever be uh, rel- it'll ever be. It'll never be changed. You'll never see an RPG two, a pure RPG two, as much as I would love it. Number one with a bullet on my most wanted list, um, other than a new Marvel versus Capcom. Of course. But, uh, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, that that game that game is a is a I love it. I play it once a year. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely gonna have to. Uh, I mean, after hearing you talk about it, I think I might have to finally channel it in and uh, sit down. I'm not the biggest JRPG fan because uh, as a child as well, I was very into just first person shooters and I wanted nothing else. And I turn based games were just not it for me. But as sure. I've gotten older, I've branched out of that comfort zone and I've started playing things that I've never played. Like uh, I played Nier Automata when that game came out and I honestly never ah. thought I'd ever play that game uh, before. And then Final Fantasy VII Remake, actually, uh, I played the demo when that came out and then I uh, played a little bit of it um, when the game actually came out. So sure. so slowly branching out of that that shell and trying to try new games. So. So I definitely will have to add that one to the list. Uh, just a brief uh, interlude, intergrade, let's say, about <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, I would suggest uh, uh, going back and playing the original PS1 version before continuing with Remake. Because there are things about Remake, particularly towards the end, that won't hit as hard with you if you haven't played it already to completion. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, little suggestion uh, for me to use. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, that remake is awesome. I just finished the intermission, the Yuffie mission uh, nice. yesterday, last night. Oh, wow. um, reviewing that for MMORPG.com. Look for that tomorrow. Awesome. I'll be on the lookout for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so um, definitely, definitely uh, check out Final Fantasy VII before continuing with remake. Sweet. I will have to add that one to the list as well with uh, Super Mario RPG. Ever-growing. <laughs> Ever growing, right? <laughs> the, the backlog list just never stops. Oh, it never does. It, it never does for any of us. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> sweet. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump into number three for you. Number three. All right. So now we're going to talk about fighting games. Uh, oh, my favorite I mean. genre has been my favorite genre my entire life. Grew up on Street Fighter Two on the Super Nintendo. Yes, and just had, just went from there. Um, I owned a. Uh, I, you name a fighting game franchise, more than likely I've either owned a game or played it at least once. Um, that's everything from the mainstream games to you know Clay Fighter. Uh, gotcha. All right. <laughs> so we're 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 talking now. Um, I could have went. I wanted to get one fighting game in here, and obviously M Bison from Street Fighter Two was the obvious choice because it was the first <laughs> boss I'd ever really dealt with, the final boss, that sort of thing. But then I thought about it a little more, and I'm like, there's got to be one that had a little more impact for me. One where, you know, one that it still sticks with me. I still remember the first time uh, I fought him. It co- took me completely by surprise. Uh, so I am going a little further in the fighting game timeline. I'm going with someone who is now a little more relevant, thanks to E3. And that is Devil. Devil oh, Kazi is specifically from Tekken 2. Awesome. Um, uh, Tekken 2 was the first fighting game I got really good at. Like really went in and labbed in the in the training mode, did combos over and over again. I still know King's ten hit combo five by memory, which he still has, thank God, so I can still <laughs> use it in Tekken Seven. I still know it by memory today because of all of the training 
all the training I did with uh, with him in Tekken Two. Uh, awesome. So playing playing through that uh, that game, the, the the arcade mode for the first time with no knowledge of Tekken One. I played a little bit of Tekken One in the arcades, but Tekken Two I played, I got into, and then brought it home on PlayStation. Um, I believe I bought it with birthday money, if I recall that year. I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, all but of us playing gamers through do that. it. Oh yeah, at least one, right? Um, <laughs> uh, but like I, I, I played through it, and I'm, I'm kicking butt, and I'm doing great. I get to Kazuya in his little purple suit, thinks he's all cool, and I'm like, "No, you, you ain't gonna beat me." And I beat him, stage nine. I'm like, "All right, I beat the boss. Let's see the ending." And then you see versus Devil, and there's this red screen with a black face and red eyes, and it switches to the stage, and this purple monstrosity with big wings and horns rises from this crouching position. You hear this slight tinge of strings in the music. The music never really picks up. It's always very melancholy, very moody, very atmospheric and you're fighting this devil in a room of mirrors where you just, uh, oh man. Can you tell that it's like burned into my soul for the rest of my life? <laughs> oh, that's such a cool boss fight. And I don't really think Tekken, to, Tekken as a series has matched that with their bosses. They got close a couple of times. I, I don't think Ogre True Ogre does it for me. Uh, I like Unknown from the Tag and Tag Tournament, uh, Tag Tournament 1 and 2 yes. uh, games. Tekken 4, I completely missed. Uh, I, in every fighting game franchise, I have a blind spot. And Tekken <laughs> 4 is mine for Tekken. Um, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, is my Street Fighter 1, which is embarrassing. Uh, but I've since, <laughs> I've since fixed that. Uh, Tekken 5 had... Uh, I don't even remember Tekken 5's boss, so next. Uh, yep. Tekken 6 had, had the big dragon Azazel. Like, the hell? Oh, Tekken 5 was Jinpachi. Jinpachi oh, Machine. Right. Which was all right. Tekken 6 had Azazel, which... Yeah. Tekken 7 was... I think it's a... It, there is no real boss, is there, in the mm -hmm. arcade modes? I don't... It's just... Oh, it's a... It's, um... It's the female Mishima with the tiger, whose oh. name now eludes me. Kasumi? No, that's not right. I don't know. Oh, I don't remember but, but, that. But her one. demon form, which is cool, too. I, it, no, no final <laughs> boss in Tekken has gotten to Devil in Tekken Devil. 2 for me. Yeah, um, devil's sweet. <laughs> that just at that I could talk about. I could talk about it all. So, yeah, <laughs> devil, awesome. So yes, De devil is a very cool boss uh, for sure. It is. It is very unique to a fighting game to have a boss fight uh, to that degree where you're fighting uh, mirrors of different kinds of devils. So it is very very cool uh, to see what Tekken did with Tekken Two. So yeah, and 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 to have a boss fight after a boss fight, like you think it's yep. over, and then I love that. I love that 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 uh, that sleight of hand. Very very cool. Yeah, those are always the best. So all right, uh, now we'll go ahead and jump into number two, coming down number close to number two. one. <laughs> yeah, so almost there. Number two, I'm finally going to bring you into the modern age of video games. Yes. I, I, sorry it took this long, <laughs> but here we are in the year 2018. I'm actually grouping two boss fights together because Ooh. in the same game because they're very similar. Um, but I can't I can't rank one without the other because they're both great for in their own unique ways. Gotcha. And that is Balder, the Stranger from God of War. Oh yes. Twenty eighteen. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> amazing, amazing boss fights. Yeah. The Stranger, the first one, is the best superhero boss fight I've ever played in a video game. Absolutely. Um and not knowing who that is, just some random dude shoot that shows up and starts punching me in the face. And that whole the whole thing that happened so so awesome and then to do it again later on with the giant uh, uh, uh the, the 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 resurrected giant also in the mix and freya being like no don't kill him and i'm like oh i'm gonna kill him <laughs> yep because he he's messing with me and then you know just the, the way that that whole thing ended with with atreus atreus hitting that shot with the one that he just happened to have because he used it earlier just such impeccable writing both of those fights are such wonderful storytelling, a, 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 a fitting end to an amazing, amazing game. I was a, I was a fan of the original God of War games. Like I liked them. They're they're over the top action. They're machismo, right. that sort of thing. It was it was good, mindless fun. God of War complete uh, 2018 completely metamorphed that franchise for me. Oh, absolutely. It's now at all now at all time. <laughs> 
yep. because of because of writing like that, the things that you did, and those two epic boss fights. Now, some people who play the game might say Sigrun, the uh, leader of the Valkyries. Well, I didn't beat her, so I can't say that. <laughs> Same. Uh, <laughs> because, because I am a dad, and I don't have that much time. So, <laughs> just, I don't just, have any I just, excuses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't um, beat it. I, I think I beat one Valkyrie, and I was like, this is not happening. Yep. <laughs> I, can't, I know my limits, and this is not going to work for me. Uh, but yeah, the the Balder Stranger fights, both of them, just awesome stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I remember picking up that game and playing it on, on release night and just seeing the Stranger come in and you're just fully focused and engaged into what that uh, cutscene is all about. And then it transforms into just a, a superhero fight. And it is insane. I mean, my jaw was just dropped the entire time. And it just... Yep. It just felt so good. The, the sound design was incredible during the fight. You can hear every, like, when you uh, break through the house, you can hear everything just kind of breaking around you. It's just, it's super well done. And and I'm in the same boat. I mean, God of War 1, 2, and 3 are, are good games, uh, but mm-hmm. I was never fully invested into Kratos or even into those worlds. I mean, I, I really enjoyed them, but I wasn't over the top, you know, fandom like everyone else. And then playing 2018, I was like, wow, like, this is storytelling at, at some of its finest. I mean, 2018 gave us a lot of great games, but that game specifically just stands out to me a, a lot. In a game full of jaw drops, yep. I think The Stranger is the first. It's the first one, so it's the best one. It's the one you think yep. about. Obviously, there are some things that happened before that that are cool, but when that, oh, man, I'll, I'll never forget that feeling. And I hope, I hope <laughs> that Ragnarok gives me a similar one or whatever it's called. Well, when the, I, when they the better keep the name out. Ragnarok. I mean, I, I know they haven't said that that's what the title is, but you can't tell us Ragnarok is coming and then that not to be the title. I mean, that's it's yeah, too good. <laughs> the only way that they can't call it Ragnarok is if they're going to stretch it into a trilogy and the second game doesn't have Ragnarok. That's true. Like if it's just if it's just the end of Fimble Winter and there's only like a <laughs> week or whatever till Ragnarok happens, you can't call it Ragnarok if it's not there. Right. Um, Pre Ragnarok or some, some, <laughs> some stuff like that. That would be uh, incredible. <laughs> but yeah, I, Ragnarok obviously is the most fitting name if that's what happens. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I I need that game to blow me away like the first one did. I need it. It's so oh. good. Yeah, I, I'm 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 pretty confident in that team uh, working on that game. I'm pretty sure that, that we too. will still have those jaw dropping moments, and I'm sure the story is going to get us pretty hard. So. Super yeah, looking absolutely. forward to that game next year. If it is next year, I'm hopeful. I didn't assume 2021 was going to happen, but I'm more hopeful for 2022. But hey, I, whenever the game's ready is when I'll be ready to play it. So no, I'm no not, rush. <laughs> I'm not entirely confident it's going to make the same time frame as 2018. So like April, May, I think is when that last April. I want to say like the last week of April in 2018 is yeah, when I think, that came I, out. I think April 20th, um, right? Something like that. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in there. Um, I don't think it's going to be that. I think it's going to be a holiday. Like maybe September, October yeah. of next year, uh, right around uh, Starfield, and God knows what else will be announced between now <laughs> right. and then. Um, but uh, we'll probably play Breath of the Wild 2 by then. I, I just come on, Nintendo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need clones. I'm going to need clones at that point. <laughs> Cloning technology. I'm going to have to sprout myself just so I can sit here and play games all day and either record it or tell me what happens because I can't. Uh, this, there's too it's many good ones. And if you, if you thought 2020 and 2021 were droughts because of the pandemic, 2022 and 2023 are going to be like hide your wallet because yep. otherwise you're gonna to have to mortgage your house with all these great games. Yeah, it's gonna be insane, and I am super looking forward to all of the fun games that 2022 uh, is gonna bring us. So, yeah, as long as something else happens, I'm I'm hopeful that we're we're good to go in the gaming world. <laughs> yes, cross your fingers, cross your toes. Put <laughs> Awesome. All right, Jason, it is time. It is going to be number one. And I mean, you already gave us a little hint, but I obviously I don't know I which did. Final Fantasy it's going to be. I have an idea, right. but I don't know for sure. <laughs> Do you know? I, I want to say it's part of seven, but I, I could be wrong. It could be like eight or nine. You would be wrong. Okay. Because my favorite Final Fantasy of all time, and this is where you lose your viewership. I'm very sorry. <laughs> is eight. Oh, okay and the reason the main reason i think that is is because it was my first one. Oh, understand my first my first final fantasy game ever from completion uh start to finish was eight on the playstation one awesome. and it 
it, it, it always holds a revered place uh, in my heart because of it. Now, that's not to say that 7 and 9 and 10 and every other Final Fantasy I've played 6, going back and playing 5 and 6, um, aren't good. They're absolutely masterpieces. And 7 Remake is incredible. It was my game of the year last year. But, um, yes, it was my game of the year in a year when Last of Us 2 came out. Yes, it was. Awesome. Um, but... Eight for me is up there, and my favorite boss fight in eight is the last one, Ultimessia. The uh, it's a four stage boss fight that make that first puts you at a severe disadvantage because it gives you three random party members. So if you went through the entire game with a core party of three and ignored the other ones, you could be screwed before you even start. <laughs> so that. That right, you have to, you have to make sure your entire team is ready to go. So that's the first part. And then the second part is each individual fight has its own stratagem strategies, has its own uh, strengths and weaknesses, has its own things that you should be doing. Um, obviously, there are core strategies that you should be doing the entire time, like using aura to make sure that you have limit breaks the entire time, holy war items if you have them, so everybody can be invincible um, for for a brief time. But like the, the sorceress herself is cool and then she gives way for her summon her guardian force griever which is a great fight in its own and then they combine for stage three which was even cooler uh that music in stage three i think is my favorite music of the entire uh, uh game almost and then you beat her as griever you beat the combination then you see all these white beams everything goes white and then fades to black you think you're done <laughs> But and not. then the real <laughs> Ultimessia shows up. The massive monstrosity of a sorceress with no face, just a big hole of light. <laughs> and she's throwing all these crazy spells at you. And, and oh, man, I that's another game I try and play once a year. And Remastered has made that a lot easier to do. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I, I just, that boss fight. I'll never forget the day I beat it for the first time. I was it was like seventh, eighth grade, seventh grade, I think. Um, it was a it was a summer day, and I finally got over the hump. It took me forever <laughs> to beat that game. But when I finally did it, I was in on RPGs and Final Fantasy for the rest of my life. That was it. That's uh, awesome. Seeing those that end credits and the and the uh, the final cut scene and then the music playing and Eyes on Me by Hikaru. Uh, playing, oh my god, just so cool. So not not a car. I'm sorry. That's Tina Hearts. Fade Wong his eyes on me. Got my got my uh. Got your swear games mixed. mixed up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts is a whole other can of worms that we're not going to get into. That is true. Uh, but yeah, but Ultimessia from Final Fantasy VIII is my uh, is my number one boss fight of all time. I just I just love it. I love all four stages. I love I love the challenge. I love the the like I said, the the idea that you may go into it at a severe disadvantage just by ignoring the rest of your team, uh, right. which some gamers do. I mean, if you, you have all these different party members and you have three that you like, you're going to gravitate towards them and use them because you know their abilities the most, you're most comfortable with them, and this game just throws a wrench right into it. I love <laughs> that. I love that. Um, can't get enough of it. So yeah, Ultimacy, Final Fantasy VIII, number one boss fight of all time. If you stuck around for that and are severely disappointed... <laughs> Too bad, so sad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, Sorry. that's awesome. Uh, but, I mean, if I'm going to throw some uh, some honorable mentions out there, of Sephiroth course. is a great boss fight, but I think his best boss fight is Kingdom Hearts. Gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, when it's just you know you versus him in that in the in the Olympus Coliseum, uh, the first Kingdom Hearts is Olympus Coliseum. The second one is like on the the Moody Cliff. Um, <laughs> and Bison, like I said, Street Fighter Two. Um, that's a that's a classic boss fight for me. And then Akuma. In Super Turbo, uh, if we're going to get into that. And then uh, I think the Smash Brothers boss fights, Master Hand Ooh. Super Smash Brothers, yes. was a, was a, was one where I was like, whoa, I'm fighting Mario's glove. And then I realized, <laughs> no, that's not what it is. When you realize what it is, the, the hand of the creator of the game, um, or in the original story, Super Smash Brothers 64, all of the characters were toys, and the final boss was just the kid's hand in a glove doing all the things. Yeah, that game's all about it. The first game was all about imagination. Second game, not <laughs> after that, not so much. Um, Nintendo. That was, that was yeah, Nintendo exactly. That was a cool little like Nintendo. What are you thinking? But I like it sort of moment. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, I, no, I don't uh, want to hoggle. I don't want to hoggle the uh, limelight here. Give me one. I know you're not going to do all five boss fights, but give, give me one. one. Uh, okay. I I don't know where I would rank it, but because of Death Stranding, that game. So it came out in November of 2019. Uh, I played it for quite Spoiler. a bit. Uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, you haven't played it. That is true. Thank you. Yeah, you haven't played it yet. Hmm. Okay. I'll just remember that. Death Stranding boss fight, really good. Y- yes, yeah, okay. Moving on from that. Ooh, what do I want to put up there then? <laughs> Damn, I forgot you haven't played that one. Oh. Uh, you know, okay, I guess uh, I'll, I'll go into 2018 as well. Uh, something that definitely stood out to me, uh, which is kind of corny, but I, I'm a big Spider-Man fan. He is my favorite Ooh, Marvel yeah. character. Uh, Insomnia Games, oh, God, Breaking. they are they are crushing it right now uh, with, with Ratchet mm-hmm. & Clank right now, and then obviously Spider-Man Miles Morales, and then what I'm going to talk about, Spider-Man 2018. Uh, spoilers for, for this game in case anyone hasn't played them, and I guess spoilers for all the other games that Jason talked about. That's another reason why I went <laughs> retro, because I, I was afraid that, you know, if I had mentioned something from last year, like like the last, the final boss in Ori, uh, The Will of the Wisps is amazing, right? Uh, and th- that ending will make you cry, but I didn't want to get too many you know too recent games because people be throwing stones at me right <laughs> hopefully no stones thrown at me for spider-man <laughs> uh if you don't want to hear about it you could just mute it and then you know hopefully come back in like two minutes when i'm done talking about it uh i will go ahead and throw in the final boss for spider-man 2018 uh y- you've played it yes yes okay uh it that is going to be doc ock uh the everything leading up to that fight when when you first start up the game and you get that phone call of hey peter you're you're late for work and you hear that voice and you're thinking oh my god is is, is that octavius like because they hadn't confirmed who uh the the last uh, sinister six was going to be they never said who the actual final boss was up until you right. played the game uh and and hearing the voice on the phone and then the first cut scene you see of him and obviously if you're a spider-man fan and you see his face and you know who he is you know what's going to happen, but the storytelling leading up to uh, uh, Octavius going from you know normal doctor to Doc Ock, uh, everything leading up to that and that final boss fight as it's kind of corny. I mean, obviously you swing around, he has uh, electricity going at you and you have to swing around and throw objects at him. Uh, specifically what that boss fight does for me is when you're on the side of the building and you're fighting him on the side and it looks like a normal boss fight you're just you're standing up you're fighting him but in reality you're you're leaning on a on a building uh and then once you finally beat him the the dialogue and the cutscene that follows after that of just super like it hits you in the heart if you care about those characters like i do and uh yeah i would definitely throw that up there i, I think that's probably that's cool. in the top five for sure um that is a good one that and, game is so good man oh it's, it's incredible <laughs> what a great game what a great Great experience. And again, as you said, Insomniac just can do no wrong right now. I'd say they couldn't do any wrong since 2014 for Sunset sure. Overdrive. Yes. But um, <laughs> but that 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 game was it was awesome. Um, I'm kind of hoping that the teases in Ratchet and Clank might mean that it comes back. We'll yeah, I, uh, I actually I have this uh, thought. I do have a Ratchet and Clank review coming out sometime this week as well, uh, where I will talk about Insomniac Games. But I know there's a big rumor that they're signing a third team because they've been doing so well. So my, my hope for them is spider-man ratchet and then maybe a sunset overdrive uh remake for the ps5 because obviously that was xbox and pc only uh and then eventually sunset overdrive 2 now that insomniac is part of playstation we will see uh some some more of sunset because uh that game was something else it was super fun i mean incredible game and that is what you know i know insomniac's been around for a while they have great games before sunset but that is what opened my eyes to that studio and what they can do and then obviously spider-man coming out you know we've had our fair share of bad spider-man games so there was a little bit of like oh boy like is this gonna be okay but insomniac put all of their love and all of their heart into that game and it came out perfect i mean that game is super fun uh there's not a lot of games that i play constantly and much like some of your games i try to play it at least once a year i mean i've beat it I, f- I think I'm working on my fifth playthrough right now. Uh, I nice. platinum the the first game in two days. I platinum Miles Morales in a day. Like I I love those games and I can't get enough of them. So that's awesome. So yeah, I would definitely Miles Morales is still on my radar. I haven't gotten that one yet. Um, I good. I do have I do have the PS5. I just have to 
have to jump find that time. That <laughs> yeah, find the time. That's yeah. it. Yeah, but it happens. You know, you get busy working on shows, working on writing dad. for things. Pl- yeah, be, yeah. Dad being a dad is, is a big responsibility. So, <laughs> <laughs> and that will always I'm come slowly, first. <laughs> I'm slowly getting them into gaming as well, but they're still very young, five and two. So I have. But we're in the Mario stage now. Sweet. We're, we're not in. We're not in the Spider-Man stage. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's how I am with. Uh, I have a couple of nephews and a niece, and I'm trying to slowly get them into games. They like watching games, like on YouTube and stuff. They are sure. uh, once turning four uh, next month, so they are slowly learning about games. But I'm trying to like pass them a controller and make them learn some things. So <laughs> there it is. There it is. Hey, that's that's what you got to do. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, uh, thank you, Jason. This was a ton of fun. Uh, I enjoyed listening to all of your boss fights, and uh, I'm sure people will hear more of mine uh, as more of these start to come out. I'm sure I'll, I'll give one per, per episode. That way we can kind of yeah. sprinkle them in. That won't be too bad of an idea for sure, so thank you for that. Uh, before we head out of here, where can the people find you? Yes, so I am on Twitter uh, at Big Man Finelli. That's B-I-G-M-A-N-F-A-N-E-L-L-I. Uh, if you want a quick reference to my work, there's a great website called Muckrack, which is like a, a, a it takes journalists and aggregates all their uh, articles, so you can find me there. Um, Chief Stakes and Controllers, my weekly podcast on all things gaming and esports, which I do in affiliation with a local Philadelphia radio station, uh, Fox Sports Radio 102.5 FM, 1480 AM. Uh, that goes live every Friday on iHeartRadio and Apple Podcasts, and then every Saturday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern Time, live on air. Uh, we are talking video games and esports for an hour on Philadelphia Sports Radio once a week, and it still blows my mind to say that out loud. <laughs> That's um, awesome. <laughs> yeah, so so you can, you can check me out there if you want to uh, check my podcast out there. Episode number 53 coming up this week. Right, fifty three. Yeah, sounds right. Uh, up this week, uh, but then yeah, Twitter, Big Man Finelli. Uh, if you want to see my musings on games, esports, wrestling, children, uh, <laughs> you know, just or, or whatever I'm thinking of in that particular <laughs> moment, that's where you, that's where I spend most of my social media time. So feel free to hit me up. Please give me a follow, and please give this guy. I hope the camera's over <laughs> there when this is edited. Um, a follow too, because he's doing great work. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jason. Uh, if anyone didn't catch. All of that it is in the description down below. I will have his Twitter. I will have his podcast. I will have everything listed down there. So please make sure to check him out. And I will see you guys on the next Versus episode, which is hopefully very soon. Uh, and remember to be better and be kind. And I will see you guys another day. Have a great day, everybody.